So in this video, we're going to continue looking at motion in two dimensions. So in the first video, we looked at the scale diagram method, and you can always resort back to that. It's a little bit tedious and not super precise, but it will give you basically the same answer. In the last video, we looked at adding vectors that were at right angles, so perpendicular, um, and that way we were just allowed to use our basic trig ratios and also our Pythagorean theorem. In the second half of that last video, we also looked at breaking down vectors into their horizontal and vertical components, and that's going to be really important in this lesson. So if you haven't watched that video, please watch that one before you start this one. And in this video, all we're going to do is we're going to do two examples. So here's our first one. This is when we have one vector that is in a due direction and then another that we're going to have to break into its um, components. So let's look at this. So we have Julie walking 30 meters west. She turns and walks 15 meters south, 35 degrees east. What is her total displacement? So we have, this is her first vector. She's walking 30 meters west. And then she turns and she walks 15 meters south, 35 degrees east. So I'm just going to draw my picture down here. So she's south and then she's going 35 degrees. So there's our 35 degrees and 15 meters. So when we break a vector into its horizontal and vertical components, we always need the angle that it forms with the x-axis. So if you remember from grade 9, you just have to do 90 minus 35, so we get 55 degrees there for our angle. So we're going to break it into its horizontal and vertical components. So we're going to have our dx and our dy. So again, if you watch that last video, you know that when we want delta dx, we're going to do delta dx equals cos theta delta d. So then we just have to go ahead and put our information in. So we're given our angle, so we're doing cos 55 times our 15 meters. So our delta dx is 8.60 meters, and that's in the east direction. If you're ever not sure about which the direction, if you're using, if you go back and you look at the direction you're given, you're always going to use whatever the horizontal component is. So we're looking at the east direction. So that's our x component. And then we're going to do our y component. So the y component is where we use the sine of our theta times our delta d. So again, that's all um, explained to you in the previous video. So if you need to, you can head over there and watch that one. So we put all of our information in, and we get 12.3 meters, and that's in the southerly direction. So we have um, an X component, a Y component, and then we have this other X component over here. Let's not forget about that 30 meters west. What we're going to do is we're going to find our total delta DX. So I've got... Um, XT there, it's hard to see, maybe here. So to figure out our delta um, XT, what we're going to do is we're going to use um, east as being positive and our west as being negative. So we're going to solve that algebraically. So when we broke our vector down, we got 8.60 meters in the east direction. So we're going to leave that positive. And then we're going to subtract 30 meters in the west direction. And so we get negative 21.4 meters or 21.4 meters in the westerly direction. Okay, so that's our total dx. Um, because that first one did not have another y component, our dyt is equal to that 12.3 meters south. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw perpendicular vectors with those two um, as our vectors. So we're going to draw a diagram. So 21.4 meters west, 12.3 meters south, and then we're going to solve for our um, displacement. So now we have a right angle triangle, so we can use our Pythagorean theorem. So 
So I'm just skipping some steps here. So if you're confused, again, go back and watch that last video. So when we do that, our C, which is our delta D total, you get 24.7 meters. Then we need our um, angle, our theta. So again, you can use whichever trig ratio you want. I always default back to tan just in case I made a mistake. So I would be doing 12.3 over 21.4. So for our theta, you get 30 degrees. So therefore, our delta D total is 24.7 meters west, 30 degrees south. So that's our final displacement value. All right, in our next example here, we have um, two vectors where we're gonna have to split them into their component vectors. So we have a hockey puck travels with a displacement of 4.2 meters south, 38 degrees west. It is then struck by a player stick and undergoes a displacement of 2.7 meters east, 25 degrees north. What is the puck's total displacement? So let's go ahead and um, draw some sketches of our two vectors. So we have south, 38 degrees west, so that's 38 degrees. Remember, you always need the angle that's formed with the x-axis. So we need to use 52 degrees. And this is our 4.2 meter vector. So why don't we just solve this one now? We have that drawing and then we can look at the other one. So we need the x and we need the y components. So to figure out delta dx, we've done this now a couple times. You are doing cos theta delta d. So our delta dx is going to be cos 52 times 4.2 meters. So our delta dx is going to be um, 2.6 meters and that's in the westerly direction. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with our delta dy values. So this time we're going to use our sine theta times our delta D. So sine 52 times 4.2 and we get 3.3 meters south. Okay, so that's that vector split into its components. Just going to switch colors and that way we can kind of keep track. So our other one, so our other vector is uh, 2.7 meters east, 25 degrees north. So we have east and then 25 degrees north and 2.7 meters. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to figure out our delta dx again. Same method cos theta delta d. So cosine of 25 times 2.7. So here we get 2.4 meters east. Then we're going to do the same thing with our dy values except we're going to use sine theta this time. So sine 25 times 2.7. So our delta dy is 1.1 meters north. So then what we need to do is we need to find our delta dx overall and our delta y. So to figure out our delta dx, we're just going to add the components that we have. So we only have two, but we could do this um, with more, obviously. We would just have um, 
So we're going to go ahead and continue solving that. So again, we're going to use um, west as being negative. So our first one was in the west direction, so negative 2.6 meters. And our second one was in the east direction, so a positive. And so we actually get a negative 0 0.2 meters. So that means our delta dx total is 0 0.2 meters in the westerly direction. So then we're going to do the same thing with our y values. So we're going to add our dy1 with our dy2. And so our first one um, was in the southerly direction, so we're going to use that as being negative. And then we had our northerly direction, so we're going to use that as positive. So we get negative 2.2 meters or 2.2 meters south. And then, just like our last example, we're going to draw a new vector using those two values. So again, it doesn't have to be the scale. So there's my 0 0.2 and then my 2.2. And then we want to solve for our delta D and our theta. So we have right angle triangle. So to solve for delta D, you're going to be doing the square root of your other two components. So when you do that, you get 2.2 meters. Okay. And then we need our angle. So again, I tend to use tan. You can use other ones if you would like. So 2.2, our opposite over our adjacent. And so for theta, we get 85 degrees. So that means our displacement is 2.2 meters. And we are going west first. And then we are going 85 degrees in the southerly direction. So that is our overall displacement vector. So it's not that much difficult, it's just a whole lot more work. So that is um, the final part of our motion in two dimensions. So in the first video, we looked at a scale diagram method. In the first algebraic method, we looked at adding perpendicular vectors and how we split them up into um, their different components. And then in this video, we looked at combining all of those skills all together. So hopefully it's been helpful.